Hello and welcome to Script Tonight React. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching season three, episode 11 of The Expanse. And this season is going out with an absolutely colossal bang. It has been non stop. I had to do the binge of all binges while I was working away because I just couldn't stop watching it. Um, then obviously I had to do all the editing, so that was that was less fun. But now I've done all my editing, so I'm able to go into episode 11, having edited all of the previous episodes. And obviously got some of your feedback in the comment section. Only one of those I'd wish to address. The next person that tries to tell me about code switching is getting spaced. <laughs> obviously I'm aware of that people's accents change based on... Where they are, I have a Bristolian accent and my accent changes completely based on the level of alcohol in my system, who I'm surrounded by, all of those factors apply. My, my point was not about the realism of Naomi's accent changing, it was about what happens to me when an actor changes their, the accent mid-flow. Because then I become conscious of the accent and I see the actor performing the accent not just the character being the character. So I wanted to clear that up. Um, obviously I assume that no one is ever, ever gonna put anything like that in the comment section ever again. Yeah, we are in a weird place now with this show that the last few seconds of the last episode, I, did, I didn't think for a minute that that Jim was dead. I'm assuming he's just been kind of knocked out by the weight of the information that he just bore witness to. And it's clear that something is going on with time because we've seen events happening effectively out of order. Like Julie Mao saw Miller in the bathroom before she met him. And there's been a bunch of other stuff like that. So I, I, I do think there is something going on with space time. I don't know quite what it is but I shared my theory last episode the proto molecules purpose is to bring back into existence a civilization that has been lost and I just think it would be the funniest fucking thing in the world if that civilization was humanity I really really do I don't know if that's going to be the case. Um, I can see reasons why it's great and reasons why it wouldn't be great. Um, because there's a part of me that would really, I guess, want to see an entirely new species of being that is, is not humanity. That would be fantastic. Equally, you know, I am a human being and we all, as one thing we share in common as human beings, is kind of a fascination with ourselves. So it would be also very nice to to see kind of future humanity. I've watched the episode, obviously with the edit and also sitting and doing the rewatch with my wife. And I was actually quite happy that because nothing has yet been explained, and I'm sure each of the separate images that we saw may mean more when they're set in a context, which I understand, but my feelings weren't actually that different. I did identify the things that were happening as they were happening that I was able to explain. Other than that, it would be guesswork because it's not clear what is happening, basically. It's not clear what's blowing up, why, in what fashion and for what purpose. So that's those are sort of the big major um kind of plot questions but i'm still finding a lot in the in the micro of this show as well on the rosy jim has had his adventure those characters are kind of in a holding pattern really waiting to find out what the fuck jim has done and what the impact on them is going to be but we've got naomi now approaching the rosy and hopefully returning to our team but they're unable to communicate with each other at the moment thanks to that fucking cohen twat that camera guy because he's screwed the whole comms up on the Rosie, which was obviously part of the part of the scheme. Clarissa Mao is, I think, looking to cause a catastrophic reactor explosion on the Rosie and take out everything around it. Mm -hmm. 
I need her dealt with immediately. I am so done with Clarissa's bullshit. The Martians are going to have a very interesting time because they are in with Jim currently in the middle of the nucleus. They will have seen what just happened with Jim. We're going to have some now outcome of what Jim has done because he did, did close the circuit. I don't think that was just about him seeing what he saw. I think something's going to happen. Uh, me and my wife went on an absolute philosophical ramble after this I, you know because i'd had a bit of time to think about it i was like here's a thought what if it's humans what you know what if it's us and, we, and so we just started kind of messing around with ideas that would come from it being humans and it was like was it always going to be jim that was needed to close that circuit and it was an interesting thought we have whether it bears any relevance to the plot honestly i i'm unbothered because i don't think that in any way diminishes the fun of working your head around theories and possibilities of the expanse that's half the joy of the show for me and we're thinking oh imagine if it had to actually be jim so it was not just a fate in terms of everything is fate because we only do it once so it was always going to be jim that was going to close that circuit but did jim need to close the circuit or was Miller being honest when he said well it's not proto Miller was proto Miller being honest when he said the only reason it's you is you've got hands basically you're a corporeal being you know, it's so funny when I sat down to do this I was like oh I've got nothing to say before for the intro I might as well just go straight into it and the moment I actually touch on any of the characters I got like a million and one things to say about it so bear with me and if you can't bear this just forward on the thomas print oh the other thing i would say because the, the reason i started with the martians is bobby is gonna have to make a choice soon i'm unimpressed that she fired at holden i'll forgive her but i'm unimpressed i need bobby back on team rosie she doesn't belong with the martian navy anymore i think i genuinely feel she's seen too much and this for me is a character regression so I'm hoping that she can come at this. And also they get to choose their missions based on their value system. And I actually think with everything Bobby's been through, that is who she is now. So I don't like seeing her return to, they're the enemy territory. I'd rather her just, you know, do her thing. But I get it. The character's on a journey. It's not a complaint with the show. I think I should be feeling like that at this point. On the Thomas Pro, oh God, she's also just seen her colleague disassembled and mulched which was fucking weird that was really weird that's the best disassembly yet though i really i like that one um it wasn't the best actually the arbogast is probably the best but it was bloody good on the thomas prince we had the suicide which was fucking awful to watch and very well done because i actually kind of went on exactly the same kind of the same journey that anna did i think i realized he had a problem before anna did when he was with anna as they were heading towards the ring i was just like god this guy is just such a debbie downer i don't i wouldn't want to be stood next to that guy at that particular moment because i would want to be fucking enjoying it so i kind of got that but it was really clear as as things moved on that he was really quite troubled um, and it's a real shame that nobody noticed. But I think Anna's speech at his funeral was actually perfect. Really struck a chord with me. It was just so true that we can we can fail people in life, but we can take the learning from it so that we don't then repeat that failure. That's what I took from the speech. And in the context of this, it's about taking the time to s see the people that are around you and be present to their experience and offer what support you can and sometimes it really is as simple as just allowing someone's concerns and fears to be heard and i just loved it i, I Part of the reason I love the the character of Anna so much is not just because we're quite we have some overlap 
it's also because I think it genuinely is one of the best portrayals I have seen of someone who is religious but also a critical thinker. I think actually I, I probably have more in common with people like Anna, although we don't share religion, than I would with people who really close their minds very hard to belief systems that empower other people just because they don't share those belief systems. And I'm really glad to see that reflected on a TV show like this, especially sci-fi, especially sci-fi. So that's my roundup of the episode. I'm going to get into it now because I don't want to wait any longer. I'm done waiting. I'm ready. Let's have at it. Woohoo! Literally didn't talk about the beer moth and I didn't talk about Clarissa and Lily Fag- um, Tilly Fagan. So, but I think it's all obvious. Let's go. Oh. His pulse is dropping. We need to get him back to the ship. <gasps> this is insane. Nobody move! What now? Trap sent an RPG up the shaft. Why? Just do it and do not hit anything. That's an order. Fire in the hole. Speed limit's changed. Watch your thrust to stay under 28 meters per second. Jesus. Shit! We're gonna stuck here just like that. Good call, Gunny. Let's just get the fuck out of here. God, she's good. Oh no! Oh no, because everyone else is going to be stuck. What the fuck? No. Don't. You'll get stopped again. Candle. As the fire consumes the oxygen and heats the air, the hotter air rises and the heavier, cooler, unburned air sinks, replenishing the fire's fuel. Thanks, gravity. In space, this cycle doesn't happen. There's no such thing as lighter or heavier air in microgravity. Thus, the fire heats the air, which just sits around the flame, causing it to burn slowly, more of a smolder. This also means the flame burns equally in all directions, forming a globe instead of the flickering flame we are used to. Flames in space can burn more slowly, more coolly, and with less oxygen. Because of this, fire in space, given the right conditions, can expand in any direction as quickly as it can combust the nearby oxygen. The heat doesn't cause any rushing air or shock waves or anything else like that, like we're used to here on Earth. Fire still works, but it's different. The really cool thing they found in space, combustion can happen with no visible flames at all. And the scientists on the space station have no idea what's going on with that. Seriously, the guy who is studying it has studied combustion for 50 years, baffled. No idea what's going on there. They learned all of this from the experiments conducted by NASA and the International Space Station, the Flame Extinguishment Experiment, or FLEX. Slowly, fucking slowly, Naomi. Oh, well done. Smart. Oh, she's fucking brave. Holy shit. Now the Martians have got Jim now. Oh, shit. The Schusen is in pretty bad shape. A third of the crew dead, another third injured. Whatever that field around them is, they can't maneuver in it. And they're being pulled into orbit around that station. Same deal for any ship that was moving faster than 100 kilometers per hour. Oh no! That's nearly every ship in this space. Yeah. I think it was trying to defend itself. Slowing things down could be the way it does it. That kind of deceleration without any notice. Yeah, a lot of people just died. 
That's not a defensive measure. That's a massacre. Oh no! What by the Thomas Prince? What by the Shh. Oh god, the bear moth. Oh no! Well, Lisa, cry, let me know you're alive. Not the best. Oh shit. Got me by the leg. You? Uh, oh, still in one piece, me somehow. First thing first, try to release the maglocks. Yeah, I'll agree. Switch is in that box. <laughs> oh, damn it. Locking pins are bent up and jammed. I can jump the engine. No, we, we can't roll. <laughs> Forward kills me, backward kills you. It has to float up. We need comms for help. Nobody know I'm down here. What? I needed to be alone so I didn't punch out my first officer for his constant second guessing. Oh, Mama Sabaka. <laughs> well, you got one thing right. You and I definitely have a problem to work out. <laughs> Fuck it out. Oh, she'd live. Of course. I'm not hearing anything from Tilly, guys. I need a status report on Anna. <sighs> Fuck. <sighs> oh, thank God. There's gonna be chaos on this ship. Who's in charge? Oh god. Oh my god! ship suddenly decelerated. We pulled massive G's. I was taking a nap. I was strapped in my bunk. There's nothing you can do for these people except ease their pain. What are you talking about? Is this your first time in zero G? Yeah. Without gravity, wounds can't drain. Blood pools and clots, tissue swells, any internal bleeding is a death sentence. Oh no! I feel like whichever one of them gets out first, the other one's dead. Oh yeah, hey. Uh. Or they make up. I see a hand terminal. The mech arm on my side have power. If your arm have power too, then you can control mine from there. Yeah, yeah, grab the terminal. I can't see it from here. Left. Right, sorry, right. Stop, stay there. Rotate. Okay. Ready to grip. On the count of three. Three! Fuck! Open the grip. Go down. Grab. Got it! <laughs> Delta ingenuity at its <sighs> finest. <laughs> She's amazing. Why do you feel like someone is going to die? Like Ashford is going to die or... It's gone. Fuck! Oh man! Melba? No. Maybe she's got a bit of internal bleeding I can hope for. All the ships in this space suddenly decelerated at the same moment. And now we're all being pulled toward the sphere at the center. All the ships? Yeah. It's okay to be scared. Oh, no. We all are bad out.
clean break. Good for you. Tilly? I've been trying to reach you. Stand. She's alive? Tilly, where what? are you? Tilly, tell me where you are. Shit. I really hope Anna knows how to fight. Oh, yes! How's he doing? Hardly. His mind's racing. Come on, Holden. LT gets torn to pieces by God knows what. You don't blink. A sleeping beauty takes a little tumble. It's all hands on deck. I fired first. I was willing to take him out. So maybe putting a bullet in him is the quickest way out of this shitstorm. What the fuck? We have our orders. Are we clear? Yes, Gunny. <sighs> Stressed. Right now, we're about half a million kilometers from where we came in. At the new speed limit, it would take about seven months to get back to the ring. The bigger ships have skiffs that can still move, but not enough to evacuate everyone. And there's no way we'd be able to provision them for a seven-month trip. Oh. Fuck. We'll figure it out. Trep's rattled. But that doesn't mean he's wrong about Holden. Holden's not a killer. He knows something. He must. He wouldn't have gone into that thing otherwise. When he wakes up, he'll talk to us. Shit. She might just have to rescue Holden here. Tilly? Oh my god, Tilly, you are alive? She's fucked. In a way, it's your fault. Yeah. That's what I get for trying to help someone. What are you talking about? She tried to kill me. Why would anyone try to kill you? Because she's Clarissa fucking Mao. Clarissa Mao. No. Tilly? Hey, oh, Tilly, Tilly, look at me. It's gonna be okay. Your tears can't even fall. You're really good at this. Come on! Tilly, Tilly. <laughs> Wrong. Oh god, Anna needs to take her apart. I got Paul's oh Christ. Oh I did not expect to end up liking Tilly Fagan as much as I ended up liking her, and I'm really sad that she's died, but mostly I'm crying with anger that she got away with that, and I'm really I really, really, really need her arrested. And I'm hoping that Anna is going to do that now. Oh, play. And Singing now make you more interesting. Less, in fact. I sang this song for my daughter when she was small. Helps me keep my mind steady in situations like this. <laughs> Whose idea was the uniforms? Yours or Dawes? Ah, uh, mine. I convinced him that it was necessary for us to start wearing them. I sacrificed too much of my life to adopt the tradition of my enemy. Well, all 
the poor and oppressed who ever fought for their equality dressed in what they This had is another of your teaching moment I prefer for bleed out in silence. <laughs> <laughs> you brought it up. It's beautiful. Individuals can be divided and conquered, but symbols, symbols endure. We are who we are. That's what makes us better. That's the way that innards need to see us. Yeah, well, they will in time. But right now, they need to see us as one. Now, I have no desire to look like anyone other than myself. But I will sacrifice my pride. To make something better for the future. I hope that one day... That's what makes us built up. <sighs> Me was sick and nigh to death. Till he go, till he go. Me was sick and nigh to death. Till he go. Me was sick and nigh to death. I'd like a scene in this episode that doesn't make me cry, please. Oh my god, that was beautiful.